One in five kids are born with it. Most go through life never achieving their potential. The opportunity to make this film came from the Yale Center for Dyslexia and Creativity, which is one of the leading nonprofits in the States that's providing important information and diagnostic skills, um, you know, broadly in America. Uh, they knew that in the day and age that we live in, that a good film, some good film content would be a good move. Um, with my background in documentary, you know, and my wife's relationship with Karen Prisker, who's the founder of Yale, all these things were swimming around, and ultimately it, it landed at my doorstep to take a stab at this film. And, you know, for me it was a, one of the greater privileges to be able to use my own artistic capacity to address a topic that I feel so passionately about. I mean, what is more important to any parent than their own children? And particularly if you've been through an experience where you've seen your children really misunderstood and in some cases mistreated, you do anything to help other parents uh, avoid that. I remember faking being sick all the time. The words just come out wrong. I would look at the blackboard and it was just gobbledygook. I couldn't do what other kids were doing. There was a time in the States where the idea of using a label like dyslexia was considered perhaps uh, unproductive because, you know, by and large you hear things like labels and they have a negative con connotation. But in the case of dyslexia, I have to say that um, having the word, having that label applied to this situation was a great relief, not only to myself and my wife, but to our son Dylan as well. Because it was such a mystery as to what was going on. Why is it that he would work endlessly at night uh, to memorize his math facts, get it down, wake up in the morning, and it was gone? It, it didn't make sense. So you, know, you start to look, try to answer these questions on your own, and it's really not good for a child or parents to answer those kinds of questions on their own. It wasn't until I got the diagnosis that I was really able to be like, I understand it now. The imaging has made dyslexia visible. You have to push yourself to do whatever it takes. It's so important to just own it. It is an island of a weakness surrounded by a sea of strengths. The biggest surprise with this film was really the response to the film. I think um, we started out making a film we hoped would be used as a tool by those that work in the field, that are trying to help families, and families that are looking for material themselves. I don't think any of us thought that it would be em embraced by film festivals, uh, embraced by HBO, um, and getting worldwide distribution at this point, which is all true. And I'd like to say that's because I'm a brilliant filmmaker, but the truth is, <laughs> It's, it's, it's really an indication of, of how much of a need there is for the story and how a pent up demand for someone to deal with this topic. I mean, you're talking about one in five people in the world. So um, I can take partial credit for getting something across the finish line, you know, in, in a, an acceptable manner. But the truth is, is there's a pent up demand. There's so many people that were just yearning for encouragement and information and hope. And I did not understand the one in five statistic until I realized the, the reaction to the film and how, how, how much it's been embraced around the world. It's, it's really humbling. Dyslexia teaches the ability to see the entire picture. Those are the kinds of things that are really important.